Yes, Mr. Thank you. I agree with you. So my topic uh, as you are aware is the need to rewrite history with a particular uh, kind of context or a particular reference to subaltern history. And basically, the, you know, it would again to answer the question, can invoking the cultural pride and the historical pride of the Adivasi population, can it put them into the forefront of being change makers and, uh, you know, at the, at the top pedestal of uh, the country's leadership? Now, before I get into that, it's important for me to address my journey that leads me into you know, uh, talking about this issue. As an author, I have had a checkered career, or rather prolific is the other word, where I, where different books of mine have been reflective of the different stages or different phases of life that uh, I was going through at a given point of time. So my first book, which came out in 2006, that thing called love was contemporary story of complicated urban relationships. I think at 28 or 29 one would relate with that kind of a, of a scenario. My next book was Cricket Thriller, 22 Yards. That was a time when I think a lot of Indians after the 2007 World Cup defeat of India had given up hopes on the Indian team and the, the way cricket uh, was, was being administrated in the country. So it was a reflection of a uh, 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 you know, it was a story of a cricket captain who was on the verge of playing his final match, and he gets to realize that 18 that the three of his team members are compromised and going to throw the match away. So it was a who done it? The captain in a span of 36 hours before the final match, realizing, uh, trying to find out. Who. The next three books was social, social politics and thrillers, and that also marked my increasing involvement in politics. Then a book followed. A parenting book from a dad's perspective that when I became a dad and I wanted to experience uh, firsthand the joys of fatherhood. So that was a book called Daddy. Now, in the last seven or eight years, India has seen a massive change. Where, yes, history is being rewritten, and that has a positive side to it and a, you know, a slightly negative side also to it. But what brings me to the topic, I grew up in a place called Jamshedpur where one would invariably find a Birsa shop, a Birsa Nagar, in, in fact the whole of Jharkhand, in fact Ranchi has a Birsa Nagar, uh, sorry, uh, Birsa Nagar airport. But whenever one would like to dwell a little more into the character, there was an absolute depth, depth of information about the character. And that is what made me realize that history is always, has always been written from the point of view of rulers, but at least if you look at the freedom struggle of India, there has always existed a parallel subaltern movement which predates the officially recorded freedom movement. So I guess today, Marks the 10th anniversary of the spirit. Today marks the 10th anniversary of uh, the 1857, the Mother Party who led the 1857 War of Independence. The thing is, tribal and subaltern wars of independence have been going on since 1784 and often complemented the mainstream freedom movement. So there was a lady called Helen Lecture from Sikkim who basically carried out her non-cooperation movement for who followed Gandhi, the principles of Gandhi and followed the non-principal movement in the place called Garcia. She was instrumental in getting Subhash Chandra free from an internship in Garcia. So in many ways, this Parallel movement was complementing the mainstream movement, but it, it made people went unrecorded. I recently wrote a book 
और बिरसा मुंडा तो मेन ऑफ दी इश्यूज विच बिरसा मुंडा हैड टू डील विद इन हिज लाइफ स्टाइल आर इश्यूज व्हिच आर स्टिल व्हिच आर इश्यूज दैट दी आदिवासी एंड ट्राइबल पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द कंट्री आर स्टिल ग्रैपलिंग इन अ शॉर्ट स्पैन ऑफ 25 इयर्स द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स बिरसा मुंडा इवॉल्व इन अ डिफरेंट ऑफ द वाज एब्सोल्युटली एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी But the lack of knowledge of Birsa Munda today, among the descendants of his clan or among the Adivasi population, invariably has been played into the hands of politicians. And invariably, you know, despite massive changes which have taken place over the last one decade, if you if you look at the primary reasons for the Naxal movement in India, or In fact, one of the other issues which plagues the Adivasi society, which is forced or enticed conversion, one of those, one of the key reasons that propelled or which actually uh, aggravated the, the issue was the vast disparity which is there. Thankfully, in the last ten years or so, much of that disparity has been addressed. How has that been addressed? Well, when you have sanitation cover increasing from 40% to 100%. In many cases, the, the the biggest beneficiaries of that increased sanitation cover is the tribal population, because that tribal population is at the bottommost pedestal of that pyramid which exists in society. When you have electrification, electrification cover, you know, or almost every village covered by electrification, obviously the the biggest beneficiary is the tribal population. Road connectivity again benefits them. So even at this point of time, somewhere. If if certain political entities still encourage a sense of victimhood, that needs to be addressed through cultural empowerment, and that is where invoking the cultural legacy of of the tribal freedom movement of India becomes very important. So coming back to my journey. The first such movement was reported around the year 1984. Tilka Maji had led that movement to Sarkar in in the areas around Bhagalpur. The issues were the same: the encroachment of jal jungle zameen, which is uh, water, forest, and land. And in many cases, the same issues played many parts of uh, the tribal population today. From the start of the 19th century, it is no coincidence that right from the northeast to the south, simultaneous movements were taking place almost across the country. Two brothers, Sarkar brothers, Sindhu Kano, led a movement in 1855, which is known as the Sarkar Insurrection, which in many ways formed the was a precursor to the 1857 War of Independence. Now the important thing over here is to contemporize the issues and the characters of these movements. A Birsa Munda today need not fight the Britishers because the conditions are different. Today the the villagers, the tribals are empowered sufficiently with with the facilities which they did not have previously. A Birsa Munda today could be a person who is disillusioned with. You know, with the with the, with the, the existing political system and brings out a new thought process. He could be somebody who is tormented in the corporate world and decides to against or or odds, you know, pursue a new uh, line of action. So I think while many of the issues of yesterday years remain the same, the important point over here is that. The Adivasi population needs to know that they have a empowered legacy, the leadership which has been provided over the last 200 centuries by a state of Adivasi leaders, for the Indian state. And finally, if I start with the Adivasi of 1984, the last of the private leaders in the before India became independent and whose contribution remains unparalleled is a person called Jaipal Singh, who many of you may not have heard of. Jaipal Singh was one of the most exceptional speakers of the Constituent Assembly, right from his views against prohibition 
to democracy that has existed within the Adivasi community over the last 10 century. All of these issues have been covered threadbare in his speeches, and his speeches, if you look, you know, I am privy to all of these because I have just worked on a book called The Great Writer Warriors of Bharat, which is the collection of 17 or 18 different stories of tribal freedom fighters. Many of these speeches, if the present population or Adivasi population is just acquainted with those, with those speeches, I think they would, the, the, the attempt of certain political leaders to mire them in victimhood would go for a toss. Today, when one talks of increased uh, adoption of biofuel, essentially biofuel much of it or most of it is extracted from a plant called Jetrofa, which grows in some of the most backward rented districts of the country, which includes uh, the areas near Nagpur. If one is, if the Adivasi population is leveraged in the production of biofuel, this is one of the initiatives, this is one of the things which. So I, I, I think the, the wars pre independence. Have, uh, are completely replaced today with new challenges, but just invoking the cultural legacy of um, of the tribal leaders endorsed them with some sense, with some sort of a with, with a, 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 a legacy to fight for. And in fact, one of the things which I have been working on, or trying to work on, and I'm glad that the previous speaker was talking about it was to introduce these characters into metaverse because that is where the age-old legacy of these freedom fighters would make, make the modern world that is where many of these would actually draw inspiration to, in, to, to invoke and to actually uh, inflict changes in their respective domains over a period of time when my book on Bersamata came out I have led this campaign. I also wrote a letter to the Honorable Prime Minister about this. That Pirsa Munda should be conferred with Bharata while it may reek of cultural symbolism at this point of time because it has been a good 120 years since he passed away. I think cultural symbolisms play a, an active role in empowering a population intellectually. And I still feel, in fact, uh, the, the latest book of mine which is coming out, that has a wall, that has a wall on the cover of it, completely steeped in mud and dry, with the letters of all of those tribal warriors. So I think if one, that is a request, that is a campaign which I have been leading. Dombari Hills was a final battle of Mitsamunda was fought. If we create a wall of all the tribal warriors that have existed from 1784 onwards to 1947, that is only going to empower or you know, make, make uh, the present Adivasi population feel a little more, uh, a greater sense of belonging towards their legacy, empower them and make them more confident in leading the next year. Uh, you know, League of Leadership in India. I think I will end with that. That's the basic thought which I have. Thank you.